I wonder if this will ever get less nerve wracking. <laughs> okay, okay, sound check. One, two, un, deux, uno, dos, tres. Okay, let's try this, this again. Blah, blah, blah. Use your words, use your words. Okay, I'm doing this, take two. I meant to stay like this, yeah, because we've been editing the videos and you need to stay still like this for a minute. And then you do that, so you don't have this weird face like this. Yay! <sighs> I don't know where I was. I had to take a break to blow my nose because I got the sniffles and then I forgot where I was. Okay, the redding bitch face. Oh, for God's sake. Well, that's where I need to put my glasses, okay. Well, now I want you to appear like a goddess. Well, not like just an old, short-sighted goddess, I guess. Ugh. Okay. I'm not COVID-proof to put this in my mouth. I got it, yeah! I won't be defeated by a thread. <whistles> now there's lipstick on my thread. Super cool. Okay, I guess I kept that one for me. Okay, let's make a start. Introductory music. Hello, hi friends, good friends, bad friends, old friends, new friends, real life friends, uh, virtual bodied friends, crafter, random visitors. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Okay, so let's cut the crap. Last video was a bit of a long one. I hope I can make it a bit um, less lengthy this time. So disclaimer, got some notes today. So the, this whole project started when I went with my friends to Bakewell, uh, Bakewell, Bakewell, Bakewell Wool Gathering, which is a wool festival in the Peak District in Derbyshire in um, England. Um, so me and my friends uh, went there in the autumn. This is something that happens every autumn and I like going to wool festivals. Um, I don't usually spend a lot there, a lot of money, but I like the um, atmosphere and I like to see my fellow knitters and crafters and it's always very inspiring. You see um, people, um, people's projects and also everyone comes uh, wearing all their best uh, knitted outfits and dresses and so on really it's really cool really really cool lots of very colorful um individuals there very uh, creative i like this really that's my crowd mate so uh, with the covid of course there haven't been uh, many of those uh, lately because um, they're usually inside. I'd never heard of one that was an outdoorsy one. So usually indoors, and even if they're in um, quite fairly big spaces, um, it's, it's still like a crowded event, really. So anyway, so I've missed those. And I used to go to Yarndale every year. Um, that's in Yorkshire, I think. Ah. Um, and it's quite good, like basically everyone's there, but sometimes it get a bit overwhelming. So I started going to the little ones and what do you know, there's one in Bakewell that's not too far from where I live. So I started going to this one and my God, I love it. It's very more, um, it's smaller and really good. I love the people there, I love the atmosphere, it's in the middle of the fields, um, super close to the town though. So we had a little wonder this year, went for a hot chucky and stuff. Um, that was nice, the weather was horrible, but uh, Bakewell was good. Anyway, long story short, um, I went there and I bought only three things there. One was two skeins of um, hand-dyed yarn. Uh, two purple ones. Don't know what I'm going to do with them. I just um, bought them because squishy, squishy yarn. I love it. And then I treated myself uh, because I haven't been to many fairs lately because of the big C. Um, and 
and there's something I've always wanted to buy um, in hand dyed yarn. So I do like buying hand dyed yarn if I can. Uh, I am very slowly building a stash and it's really good. It's really worth the money. And I don't always use hand dyed. I use a lot of ac cheap acrylic for a lot of things. Um, but it's nice to trick to oneself um, sometimes. So the one thing that I always um, want to buy, but I never buy because I'm like, oh, I don't know, it's a bit expensive. Um, and truly, it is pricey for my budget, but it's not a pricey item for what it is because a lot of work goes into it. So that's basically hand-dyed, self-striping yarn. So when you knit it, it just gets stripy. So super clever stuff. Um, I don't exactly know how they do it, although I'm planning to try it um, myself when the weather's better and I can do it outside because I like dyeing yarn sometimes just for fun, you know, like I don't really have uh, high expectations. But so I went there and I saw um, this yarn that caught my eye and it was really hard. So it was on the stall of those independent dyers they're from the UK. I don't know where. Sorry, guys. Hello. Um, they're called. I I got notes because I all get always get the names wrong. Sorry. Um, they're called All Wool That Ends Wool, and they had this fantastic stall with lots of um, self striping yarn with lots of different color schemes, and it was so hard for me to choose. I didn't know which one to choose, um, and in the end, my uh, little one picked. <laughs> the yarn I was like just choose for me because <laughs> I got really overwhelmed and um, I just wanted the one skein so I got one and I think the colorway is called deep rainbow I can't find the label anymore which is a bit of a shame and it's a bit weird because usually I keep labels but um, I will probably find it right after I've done this video um, so I looked on their website I will put the link in the in the presentation under the video so all the links everything i'm going to mention today will be there um so i think this one is the deep rainbow so i bought this gorgeous i'm not showing you haha <laughs> tease i've i bought this 100 grams ball of um yeah i said skin but it's actually in a ball um i think it's better to see the stripey effect so i think it's a good idea to sell it like this um so 100 grams self-striping hand dyed yarn uh, pricey for my budget not pricey for what it is guys um and i'm like okay what am i going to make with it and i had been eyeing a pattern by the lovely nairi <coughs> link here um that is called uh, sod socks so she tells a little bit about the story that she absolutely loves um four ply fingering uh, weight yarn uh we don't laugh when i say fingering that's the rule of the yarn club, yeah, rule number one. Uh, or you can, um, yeah, maybe you can. So, uh, laugh now. Uh, so, yeah, so she said that she absolutely loved that yarn, but she's not a huge fan of hunted, unknitted uh, socks. I can't talk today, it's like blah, blah, blah. Um, so, she made up a pattern for um, fingerless gloves fingerless mittens um, and they're amazing so a couple of my friends have made this um, pattern they've, they've made it as a product and I thought this because I love uh, fingerless gloves I've made myself a coat a jacket with my handwoven fabric I will show it to you one day and it's got the sleeves are a bit short uh, maybe here so but I love wearing it so what I do is I wear gloves with it. And what I like with Nairi's pattern is that you can, some amendments are included in the pattern. So you can do variation of it and you can make them longer or shorter. And I thought, oh, I want to make myself some really, really long ones because they usually have a super nice effect. Okay. So I wanted to make really long ones. So I made myself those. They're absolutely fucking amazing. Uh, so thank you, Nairi, for your good work, because I don't do pattern writing. Um, I don't even... 
plan on doing it. it it's very much out of my depth i think maybe it will come one day you know you live and learn so i'm going to put them on look at them look at those beauties and i think they're showing this kind of yarn very well and there you go look look at those how cool are they so they're really good so as you know I like winging stuff, so I, there's no matching stuff there. Of course, the stripes are they they come in the order that the yarn uh, has been dyed, um, but I didn't want to match them. I just picked the yarn where it was, and I don't like waste. So yeah, these are my gloves. So I keep them on now because it's a bit chilly, you know. Um, also, disclaimer number two. Disclaimer: um, I was planning on crafting while I was talking. But, ah, man, that's hard. Maybe we'll come. Maybe I'll try. Then you'll see my um, sewing bitch face. So, I made those. And I still had a lot of yarn left, believe it or not. Um, and, oh my god, they're so, they're soft. And the colours are so bright. I really, you know, sometimes you get, you pick a yarn and you pick a pattern and you start making it and you absolutely love both and then they just don't match together it just doesn't work but those it's like match in heaven really good so i made those and i didn't think i would have much yarn left but actually i did so then i asked my little one if she wanted socks if i uh, if she wanted me to make herself her socks for maybe for christmas or just like that and at first she said yes. That's when I was knitting and I realized I will have some um, some wool left. But then when, once I was done and she saw my mittens, she said, oh man, I wanted mittens like you. And I thought, oh, maybe I can add that this pattern for those tiny, tiny little four years old ends, but I'm not that good. So I browse on the internet and I very, very, um, how do you say, loosely adapted a pattern for her. So I used a pattern that I found online. So I put the link down there, but I didn't really follow the pattern that much because basically what I had done is I had cast it on for socks already because it was late in the evening. She hadn't told me she wanted gloves. So I started and I cast it on 44 stitches. So I looked um, online, I looked at a few patterns, uh, free patterns, and I found something that looked a bit like I wanted and I knew I could amend it. It was like the, the modification were not that bad and you needed to cast on 44 stitches. So I thought that's perfect. So then I made her those super sweet little um, hand knitted mittens. Um, they were very easy very easy to make and um, I just had to try them on her and see how long she wanted them. Very, very easy project, very quick. And she's not left them ever since. So I wanted to film very quickly and I wanted to show you this, but that didn't work because she wouldn't uh, let go of them. She sleeps with them, she goes to her uh, nursery with them. So that was a bit of a challenge, but now I've got my hand on them because, um, yeah, we're Sunday. I'm filming on Sunday and she, I managed to negotiate for her to let, leave them with me. So I had, I've made those then, which are very, very easy to make too. I have to say, if you can uh, knit a pearl, because there's a tiny bit of ribbing there. And what else do you need? A little bit of decrease. Are there some increases? Everything's explained in the pattern, but honestly, I would say that's a fairly good pattern. Maybe not straight for a beginner, but if you've made one thing already, I think this would be a good step up from the um, good old straight up scarf. Um, and it's just, I knit with those needles, my knitting needles, look, they're like two sticks. Can you see? Ha ha. Um, they're very tiny, but then I can just go around in circles um, and it's fairly quick, fairly, fairly quick. So I made those, then I made those and guess what? I still had some yarn left. So I thought, 
Man, now I'm setting myself up for a challenge, the one skin challenge, the one ball of yarn challenge, because as I said, that was quite um, a fair price for my budget, this yarn, and I was uh, determined not to waste any at all. So I, I looked up online and I remember there was something small I wanted to make. So the obvious choice would be to make something else for a child, like a little toy or something with it. So I found another pattern, link here, which is a free pattern. Um, so it's called African Comfort Doll uh, by William Willibund. And basically, they've, this pattern has been on internet forever. It's, yeah, mem even the link says like web archive. <laughs> it's so old. It's like the, the, yeah, so old. And so that's, that pattern was originally made for a charity that works and sends uh, medical supplies in Africa uh, for uh, victims of AIDS. And they use those as uh, packing bits to keep the, all the medical supplies together. And then they give them to the children around. So that's a tiny little doll like this. So I've been eyeing this forever. Um, but never took the time to make it like one of the six million projects I've got uh, on my list on the internet of things I want to knit. Uh, and I thought self-striping yarn would be perfect for this. And that's something that actually, you know, gives us joy because you can really see that yarn. I think it's really good with that yarn. I wouldn't buy this expensive yarn to make this, but then because I had some left and I don't want just to ball it up and leave it in my stash like this. So I made this little chap. So I think it's really cool. Once again, it's quite a um, fairly straightforward project. So I made this one, my little one snapped it straight away. She really likes it. I think it's really cool. Um, and it's called Bakari. That's Bakari. Um, yeah, really cool. So they use, on the original pattern, they, they recommend to use different colors but because this one was self-striping so i didn't really follow the number the exact number of rows for each color i just left the yarn do its marvelous job so you got the little top of the hat is a different color of the rest but i think it works i think it's fairly cool so it's basically a rectangle um and yeah it's a rectangle and there's some decrease at the top and then it's just um clever sewing there that defines the body and the neck and stuff and then I embroidered his face that I used a different yarn for this because I had used some uh, leftover of that yarn but it didn't offer a good enough contrast for the face so yes yeah, so he's got little wonky eyes but I think that's good and I like that when you make th things yourself they get their own personality so and guess what there was still some yarn left so I used my brain for once. I used my brain and I thought, okay, I've got uh, this tiny, tiny little ball of yarn. I don't know how much left there was, not not much. And I thought, okay, so we've done massive, uh, massively long um, fingerless gloves and then tiny ones for a child. And then we went tinier, we made a little toy. And I thought, okay, maybe I could make a brooch. So, now that's when I have to um, admit that I have a little obsession with tiny houses. Um, I love the aesthetics of seeing lots of tiny houses together. That's why I kind of like um, English architecture. I like looking at the landscape and seeing all these tiny little red brick houses in the north of England. And I used to live in Paris and in Paris I liked there was something a bit different it's not really tiny houses but on big old buildings you can see when they they knock down a building because they're gonna like it's too old or they want to uh, bring something new or make a park or whatever when they knock down the building on the actual side wall on the building that's still standing there on the side it's amazing I love it you can see all the old um, uh, wallpaper and the shapes of the rooms that were there. I absolutely love it. I love it. And I like walking at night and 
seeing lights behind windows and thinking, ah, oh, wow, that's really cool. Like there's an actual person behind every one of these windows. Um, and they have a brain and they have all those ideas and dreams and like a life. And I just love it. I don't know. It just, it gets me. I don't know. It's just amazing. And I'm that obsessed with tiny houses that I actually got a tattoo of lots of tiny houses on my arm. So the obvious now was to make um, a brooch of a tiny house. So I basically caught, and I thought that would work really well with the yarn, with the stripe yarn. So I would just follow whatever number of um, the height, the number of rows I would get from every single yarn. So I made, I can't remember which one was the first one. I made that one, I think. Let me see. It works better if my hands hasn't got a glove, yeah? Like this, yeah. So I've made this tiny little brooch. Let's zoom in. There you go. Zoom with your feet. Zoom with your feet. So I made this one and then so I basically I knitted it and then just decreased for the roof and then embroidered with that same yarn still and little uh, flowers there. And then I bucked it. I have at home, as I told you, I like using what I have. I had this from it's like thick felt. I don't know where I bought that from. It's three millimeters thick, so it's quite it's quite a thick one, thicker than usual. It's quite uh, um, stiff. Maybe you can't tell on camera, but it's quite stiff. And I had bought a couple of sheets a few years ago to make some Christmas decoration, and I still had some left. So I backed this with it, and then I still had some yarn. So. I made more, so let me find the ones I made. Let me take this off because I'm getting a bit hot now. So I made this one and then I made which one? I can't even find them anymore. That one, a little tiny one, super cute. And then another one. This got this one's got two colours there. Not that you can tell. You can tell when you're looking close. Um, but yeah, it's got two colours. And then this one that I really like looks like a big barn. And then because I really liked making those, I picked up some another type of yarn and I made some more. So I've got quite a few of those. Because I finished the ball. <laughs> I used it all up. When I say all, not quite, because I have this left. Oh, fell. This much left. So what do you say? I think I I um, completed that challenge because there's hardly any waste. I'm even considering using those for a collage. Um, I used to have a bottle and I like drinking um, like Fentiman's rose lemonade and uh, out of the flower press and stuff. And I really like their old school bottle, glass bottles. So I used to have one years ago that I would stuff with all my little um, wool remnants. So I don't know if I should start another one or maybe I'll use that in a collage or maybe I'll just get discarded. So yeah, so I'm really pleased. So with one ball of yarn, once yeah, one ball of 100 grams, I made those and then I made those and then this and then those one, two, three, four, five little houses with the embroidery thread. I used the same yarn to do that. So that was really cool. And then I made three more, four more. So those two are done. And then I'm in the process of doing this. I wanted to do them while I was filming, but clearly that's not happening. Um, and then I've got those. So at first I didn't really know what I was making. I thought, oh, I'll make a little house and see how it goes and how much yarn it uses. And then like, it just became obvious that it would be like a little, a little brooch. And I've got this bag full of those uh, little things to attach brooches. So I'm going to sew them in the back. And I think I'm going to keep one for myself. I don't know which one yet. I'll see which one. Um, and then I am offering to um, sell the other ones. If you'd be um, happy to get one, just uh, let me know. Send me a message. Either you can comment here. Or you can, in my profile, you get, or maybe I can add it there, 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 somewhere, in one of the corners. 
I can use a some sort of tag to put my link tree and then you can message me either on Facebook or Instagram and then um, I'll send one to you. So I think I've got nine in the end. I stopped because um, I wanted to make something else, which also involves tiny houses. Um, so yeah, so I'm going to sew those, those in the back, keep one for myself. I don't know which one yet. Maybe I'll have to pick at random in a bag. And then I'll post a picture at this end, at the end of this video with the ones that are left. And then if there's one that take your fancy, just let me know. Or if you want one at random. So yeah, that was me. And also, oh yeah, I wanted to chat about this. So those just, you know, like us crafters, seriously. So those brooch, I don't know how they're called, brooch pin backing attached ties. I don't know how you call them. I bought those in 2001. I must have moved at least eight or nine times since then, okay? But they, I kept them with me. I bought them on a market in Bangkok, in Thailand. <laughs> and I had no idea what I was going to make with them. I was just thinking at the time, oh yeah, that's cool, that's cheap. Like, yeah, that could come handy one day in my life. And so, yeah, I bought a bag. I can't even remember how full it was. But yeah, over the years, I've used those and I've never got, got a ring of them. And now they're coming handy. So don't throw anything away. So yeah, that's me for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little video. Sorry, I was not able to show you how I was um, sewing at the same time. I need to work on this. Um, but maybe next time. So I hope you have a lovely week, you enjoyed that video, and uh, lots of love to you guys, and get crafting! Bye! <laughs> Ending music.